good morning. My name is Kristen Cam, and I'm a GIS analyst at Telenav. And over the past couple of years, I've been working to improve the navigable quality of OpenStreetMap. As some of you know, well, through my experiences working as an OSM editor, I've realized there are, there are limitations to armchair mapping. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, armchair mapping means the usage of aerial imagery and publicly available GIS data to improve OpenStreetMap. For you experienced OSM editors out there, it's pretty well known that aerial imagery and publicly available GIS data can be pretty dated. As such, the surest way to improve OpenStreetMap and, and have the most up-to-date data is to conduct a field survey. Today, I would like to share Telenab's experiences in Telenab's experiences with leveraging publicly available GIS data to one, improve OpenStreetMap, two, identify data gaps with OpenStreetMap. We also collected nearly 40 hours of field survey video and GPS traces where we used to update OpenStreetMap. I hope today that you walk away from this talk inspired to conduct your own field survey or to improve your existing field survey processes. So before I get into the details of our project, I would like to acknowledge the individuals that were involved. It's one individual is Dame Ailade, Chris Sontine, and myself. In May 2014, Telenav released Scout OSM, and we received a number of customer feedback reports about missing roads. We were tasked to see what the issue was within metropolitan areas within California, Texas, Michigan, and Georgia, to name a few. And we found that there are many missing roads in the North Dallas, Texas area. This is attributed to the rapid residential and commercial development within the North Texas area. And I'd like to illustrate it with this 22-year time-lapse video of landscape imagery from 1984 to 2012. With our initial investigation and this video, we decided to do a deeper dive as to what the extent of the data gaps was and to improve OpenStreetMap. So we defined a study area, which is a 30 by 30 mile grid. And to reduce the work into manageable problem sets, we split that grid into 225 individual cells. Before we actually embarked on our analysis and data update, we identified a number of publicly available data sets. One includes the US Department of Agriculture's National Agriculture Imagery Program, or also known as NAEP, imagery data set that was collected in 2014 for the state of Texas. We also contacted the city of Frisco, Collin County, Denton County, and the North Central Texas Council of Governments to acquire roadway network data to improve OpenStreetMap. Together with this defined study area and external data sources that we acquired, our quest was to improve the signpost and the surface road coverage within OpenStreetMap. An example of work done on a cellular basis is this slide. In the Java OpenStreetMap editor, we overlaid upon the NAEP imagery OpenStreetMap data, as well as local government data, in this case, the City of Frisco roadway network data. We use the City of Frisco roadway network data to add or improve the existing OSM geometries. Additionally, the data included attributes that we, were, that we used to update the navigation-related attributes of OSM, ways, nodes, and relations. As you can see in this slide, in this residential subdivision, there is roadway paving going on, but it's not conclusive whether or not these roads are actually open to the public. Additionally, in the southwest corner of this residential subdivision, 
The city of Frisco indicates that there are proposed, and con and ro proposed roads and roads under construction. We mark these areas as places to survey in the future. In terms of identifying what the signpost coverage was, we ran an integrity check upon the OpenStreetMap data within the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area. And we were able to identify about 400 or so missing signposts. We went from signpost, from signpost case, to update OpenStreetMap, and we utilized AA roads with the signpost information and adding that as a highway equals highway equals motorway junction tag on the node that represents the signpost, as well as the OSM way that represents the signpost off-ramp, and we added a destination equals whatever the name of the signpost was. We went from all of the different cells and all of the signpost cases, and we found that there were about 50 different cell and about 200 different signpost locations that we would need to survey in order to update OpenStreetMap. But before we could actually go about and conduct a field survey, we needed tools. One tool that we developed was a field atlas with the information that we had come up with after going through our cells and missing signpost cases. And we created a field atlas, which we produced, printed out, and brought with us during our field survey so we can jot down our observations as we traveled from survey site to survey site. We also needed a way to record our visual observations and our travel during the field survey. So we acquired a camera that had the ability to record GPS traces as well as still and video imagery. Additionally, we needed a way to get us from one survey location to another survey location, so we acquired a device that would direct us from one location to another. And in this device, we populated with OpenStreetMap data, which was developed by a Spanish website which loosely translated into English free alternative maps. And we use the OpenStreetMap data within the GPS device, not because you know, this is an OpenStreetMap project, but because the roads that are under construction or proposed would show up in the device, and it would be a very easy visual cue when we look at the device, like, oh, this is the area we would need to survey. So routes, how are we gonna get from point A to point B? We used an application for Garmin we downloaded all of our survey locations into the application to generate routes. And all of these routes were uploaded into the GPS device. After we conducted our survey, we used a number of tools to process our field survey results and update OpenStreetMap. This includes the Java OpenStreetMap editor, Jawsome, the Garmin Verb Edit application, which enabled us to view our field survey video alongside our GPS traces, which we collected. At last, we used a Postgres database to keep track of our updates to the cells and the missing signpost cases. In order for me to fully illustrate to you the end-to-end -end process and how we improved OpenStreetMap prior to our field survey and after our field survey, I'd like to share with you a handful of cases. The first case is the West Spring Creek Parkway extension. When we were working with the city of Frisco data alongside the OSM data in Chawsome, we noticed that the West Spring Creek Parkway ex would be extended from Town and Country Boulevard to Memorial Drive. But the aerial imagery provided by NAEP was inconclusive whether or not this construction was complete. So we went out and visited the site. When we returned to the office and viewed this video alongside the GPS trace, we learned that the West Spring Creek Parkway extension was still closed and under construction. As such, the existing highway equals construction tag was left alone. 
The next case I would like to share with you is associated with a signpost. This video is associated with a field survey trip down Texas State Highway 114. The purpose of this survey was to collect signpost information along TX 114 southbound. When we returned to the office, we came up with one interesting case, the Main Street off-ramp. As you can see in the video, TX 114 southbound is about six lanes in width, and that the Main Street off-ramp is not physically separated from the main thoroughfare of TX 114, and is demarcated by this solid white line and portion of this overpass structure. So when we got to the office and we downloaded the OSM data, to our surprise, we found that there was no OSM way that represented the Main Street off-ramp. And we were confused because Main Street is obviously a pretty popular street because it conveys folks to the Grapevine Historic District. So we took a look at two data sets, the NAEP imagery that I mentioned earlier and the Bing 2011 imagery that was donated to the OpenStreetMap community by Microsoft. And as you can see, the Main Street off-ramp, it's clearly obvious where it is in the Bing imagery. But over time, there was construction on this highway, and the new imagery of this section does not have conclusive visual cues of the Main Street off-ramp. So we used the knowledge that we acquired during our field survey to add it over some way to the database that represents the off-ramp. And we created a signpost record by adding a highway equals motorway link tag to the OSM way that represents the off-ramp, as well as a destination equals Main Street tag and a motorway equals junction tag on the node that represents the location of the signpost. The next case I'd like to share with you is the Coit Road widening. When we were evaluating the data City of Frisco data and the OSM data, we found that Coy Road was under construction and we, we widened from a two-lane undivided road to a four-lane divided road from El Dorado Parkway to West Ridge Boulevard. Again, the aerial imagery was inconclusive of whether or not the construction had been completed. So we went about visiting the site and we found that this roadway segment had indeed opened and that Coit Road had been divided to north and southbound side, and each side of Coit Road is two lanes. When we reviewed the video and the GPS trace, we updated the open street map data by removing the highway equals construction tag that represented the Coit Road southbound, and we updated the highway tag to secondary as well as the one-way and the lane count tags. The next case I would like to share with you is the Villages of Willow Bay development. When we looked at the City of Frisco data alongside the NAEP data, there was nothing indicating what the names of these roads were. And as you can see in the aerial imagery, it looks like they were constructed, but there were no houses alongside of them. And there was no way we can identify the names because the city of Frisco data that we had acquired had not been updated yet. So we went about surveying the site. And the purpose of this survey was to, one, record a GPS trace so we could conclusively say that, yes, this portion of the Villages of Willow Bay development is open to the public. And two, to record the sign information so we can update the name tags on the ways that represent the internal circulation with this residential development. In some, these cases were one of the many that were collected during this 1,000 mile field survey that was conducted in March 2014, excuse me, 2015. About 146 trips were made. And as you can see, literally thousands of different navigation related attributes were updated as a result. So what did we learn from all of this? 
Well, one, aerial imagery, however up to date, can sometimes be inconclusive as to what the actual ground truth was. Two, sometimes when you're conducting a field survey with a specific goal in mind, the results are inconclusive. And the way we handle that is that if there's a road under construction or a residential subdivision under development, we would add tags to OSM that would indicate that these roads are under construction or OSM some notes to say, hey, we should revisit this at a latter point. Because of the sheer volume of videos and GPS traces that we collected, we felt that it would be much better next time if we went about this to use an external hard drive because I only have so much space in my PC. The other thing we found is that we have to be prepared for inclement weather. Those of you unaware, there was a massive snowstorm in Dallas in early March. A lot of roads were iced over, people skidding out, and in this case, our windshield was iced over. No one had any ice scrapers. The last thing was the next step is that the city of Frisco not only provided us with roadway network data, but also address point data. And we plan to conflate that data with OpenStreetMap by using the OpenStreetMap Tasking Manager. So I would like to thank all of you for coming out for this talk. And I hope that you guys acknowledge the benefits of armchair mapping, but also strive to incorporate field surveys into your work to improve OpenStreetMap. Combining the two approaches is efficient because you can get a lot of work done in the office. But is it effective because there are some things that you would probably miss armchair mapping, but you would not miss by field survey. If you are interested in working with Telenav in this domain, please send me an email or talk to me after the session. Otherwise, I would like to open up the floor for Q&A. Thank you. I'd like to invite Tommy, if he wants to, another teammate to field a question. Anyone? Yes? Uh, do you plan to do more uh, expensive uh, in time and money uh, uh, with your company, or is it just an experience? Do we plan to do more surveys in the future like this? Yeah. Yes. Uh, as we find more errors in the mapping um, uh, areas with errors, we plan to do more of this in the future. Yes, sir? Uh, the, the ever municipalities give you any data so that you could get it from them as it becomes part of the tax parcels? As, as the, the, um, the buildings are finished or the roads are finished, do they have any way of publishing this information that you could pick up and, you know, and, and incorporate into your survey? Yeah, uh, the, your question is, as the cities go about updating the data, is there a way we can find this data and do more improvements? Correct? Right. Okay, uh, the way it works is the cities, like every six months to one year, they publish data on their websites and we have permission to use it, so we have to manually like check. We know the update cadence for uh, some of the counties, some are like every July and January. And so we can go in and every six months pick that up and compare with what we have in OSM, what has changed, and then make updates based on that. No, we have to do all of that manually. Yeah. 
Uh, did you just uh, search through the whole area, like uh, grid by grid, or is there any more efficient way to find problems, like maybe by comparing with uh, Google Map or other map sources? Uh, we did most of the searching. Uh, we had done, first of all, software to identify areas where there were gaps. And once we knew there were gaps in these metropolitan areas, we then went and searched grid by grid to find out what the problems were. So it was a hybrid of uh, automated and manual. Uh, we just ran queries. Yeah. Sorry, question over there? Of the approach, so the scalability of the approach. So you, this is, a, I guess, a case study for a particular area, um, but there could be many such areas ac across the country and across other countries that you're, you're active in. So the question is, is, as much as this was a useful exercise and as much as you got better data out of that, if how, do you have a picture of how much of a problem, how many places you have similar problems in, and whether that is something that you can cover or whether a different approach is necessary? Scalability? You want scalability, like how scalable is a problem? How scalable is a problem? Can we scale this? Yeah. I think we can scale it. We, we have a, a detail how we came up with the grid, but if we would try to scale it up, we can replicate how we create the grids. You know, we can come up with a process on how we acquire the data. So either you, there's specific memos. You can say, um, I think it, for me, maybe you could do more like coordination amongst groups. So either you know, we could do a lot of work, maybe it, a lot of folks that are updating OpenStreetMap volunteers, they're not working on this full time. So we could possibly do some work and to contact some of the agencies to acquire the data and set things up in a way where we are physically not located in Texas, tell enough. But we could give that information to folks in Texas, say, hey, we know there are areas that could be updated in Texas and we identify data that could be used. So there could be future collaboration. I think we'll probably have to talk more later. Oh, sorry, sorry, sir. Uh, two questions. Um, one, like, how did you plan the routes you're going to take for the field surveys? And secondly, um, is there anything you wish you had, um, like, in your field surveying rig, like, you know, the camera and the sensors? Is there anything you would uh, add to that for your next round? All right, two things. The first question was, how did we plan this field survey, come up with the routes? And the second question was, is there anything we could want to improve upon in the future? Is correct? Yeah, for, for, for the, when you're on the road, like the, thing, the data you're collecting. That. So the first question were the routes. The thing that I would improve upon is actually not having any overlapping routes. So there's sometimes we, we left from our hotel, and we took the same route from one location to another. We also felt with the, how do I say this, the, with, our, with, our, uh, with, our, with our route planning, we tried to find areas further away from our hotel so we, we could visit those first. And then we also wanted to find areas like close to our hotel and survey them later. I don't know if that's clear. So. We didn't quite have like a, like a priority like like area, but we tried to visit areas further out first than later. Oh, that's going to be the last question, by the way. Um, and the second question for what we could improve upon with the survey, the cameras. And I don't really have, for me. I don't think there's anything equipment-wise that I would improve upon. Um, Tommy, do you? Think of it, I think it was it worked out pretty well with the wide angle lens of the camera and the GPS trace. I mean, unless you want to have another camera point to the back, but we saw no reason to acquire a second camera. So I don't know if you have anything to answer. Okay. Um, if you have any other questions, you can come, back, come down and ask. Um, otherwise, I'd like to uh, hand the mic over to the next talker.